the automobile world is going through a transformation. A transformation that they say happens only once in a century. There's ADAS, there's alternative fuels, there's everything going electric, connected. The question is that these opportunities require a lot of hard work. Hard work which is only possible when you have the best of the minds working together in a team to create win-win not just for the end consumers, for the OEMs, for the tech developers, but the complete supply chain of the mobility sector. Today, we have with us Christine Trecker, Chief Human Resources Officer, Visteon. Hi, Christine. Hello, Hello there. Perfect. Welcome to Mobility Outlook. And she would be taking us through how Visteon is preparing for the future and how it is enabling its workforce to do the same. Christine, my first question, as I all, you know, as I just mentioned that there's a transformation of the century happening in the mobility world, right? Where do you see Visteon fitting in that puzzle? So I agree. We are all in the midst of a once in a century transformation and we are smack right in the middle of that. And it makes it a really exciting place to be. So if you look at uh, the opportunities, the ones that you mentioned, uh, technology coming in. So the device is now going to be the car instead of your phone. There's just so much change that's happening. And so if I think about the products that Vistion has, if I think about the technologies that we support, if I think about the goals in terms of creating a more safer, um, uh, sustainable uh, environment, we're right in the middle of that. And we need a lot of the right talent to make sure that we can support, as you said, not just our customers in the supply chain, but really globally, how do we make the world a better, safer place to be? Perfect. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of technologies right now, right? That also changes the way HR functions. Mm -hmm. You know, with, the, with this changing world, with this transformation, how are the functions of an HR, right, of the HR at Vistion changing? What do you see the next trends? And, you know, how do you ensure to find the best talent and retain them as well? Because, you know, the great resignation is taking place. And I'm <laughs> sure you've read, read about it more than I have, right? So how, do you, how are you, uh, you know, uh, preparing for those challenges? So that's a, a big question that you've just asked. So I think let me answer it in a couple of different ways. First of all, I would argue that HR's role in innovation needs to change. I think in many cases, historically, HR teams have been at the side or an afterthought or have executed what others um, have, have done before them. I see it differently and my team and I both see it differently. We need to be in the midst of this. We need to be leading this. We have as much responsibility for taking advantage of the technology changes that are happening, for understanding what's happening within um, the rest of the world and driving that. Though our lens, you know, we're business leaders first, but we have a lens of the talent. And so what does that mean? For us, it means making sure that we have the talent that are ready, that can support, that can lead from the front in terms of bringing this innovation into the company. It means that HR itself, we need to do the same thing. How do we understand our business and all of these changes so that we can support uh, the business and making sure that these things happen? For us, it's future-proofing our organization, too. So some of the traditional skills and capabilities that we've had may not be the right skills and capabilities for the future. So how do we identify those up front and then determine how do we develop them internally? Do we buy them externally? Or how are we going to support that in advance of when we need to have those skills and capabilities? It's a big ask. Perfect. Uh, you know, speaking of technologies, right, you've again mentioned a lot of technologies. You've again mentioned a lot of challenges that you're going through as well. Uh, are there any new kind of HR tools, maybe digitalization or automation or anything of that sort that you're investing in to make HR more, you know, uh, efficient and working? Mm -hmm. 
So there are a lot of tools that, that are there and um, we're very particular about where we make investments because um, we need to first start with what are the business objectives we're trying to achieve. So if I look at the tools that we've been investing in for the past three, three and a half years, the first one is around workforce planning. And we've assessed our, our engineering employees so that we understand the capabilities that they have. We look at capacity so we know based on the projects that we want, and then we find ways to marry those up. Um, that's given us not just a lot of data, but insights then into things like if we have a large number of employees in one spot, but the manager is in another spot, that seems like a disconnect. Uh, we find that sometimes as we look at the layers of our organization, sometimes there's maybe too many on top or not enough on the bottom. And so we've taken that data and turned them into insights. That's the first one. The second tool is been around um, the employee experience and really building the employee experience. So we invested in a tool that um, has automated the way that employees access their information uh, through workflow processes that makes it easier and far more relevant so that they don't have to search for things all over. Uh, the third one, and this is really some experimentation that we're doing, is around um, uh, bots and how do we use bots to help improve processes um, and uh, automate things. So we're doing a, a number of experiments. I think as I look forward, some of the other things that we'll want to do is, again, focusing on employee experience, creating an internal job marketplace, better understanding our employees. There's a lot of talk about some online coaching tools that maybe wouldn't have been so um, interesting a few years ago before COVID, but since everybody worked from home, there now there's a lot more acceptance that really support and supplement what managers do. So a lot of technology happening out there. It's interesting that you mentioned the uh, terms automation and bots. Mm. I say this because, uh, you know, there's a great fear out there in the minds of professionals that technologies like automation, IoT 4.0 and bots, mm -hmm. yeah, the ones, the physical ones, would eat a lot of jobs. Mm. Do you agree to this? I don't. And in fact, I would argue, um, and someone can probably find the exact numbers, that AI and some of that will actually create more jobs for people. Someone once said that AI was not artificial intelligence, but assisted intelligence. And I love that because I think that's true. If I can keep the same number of employees, but get them focused in different areas that are more value added to running our business, um, and, and I've got plenty of work to do, automating some of the back-end things that are really administrative will only allow them to focus more. So I think that there is a time and a place for them, and I think it actually helps all of the employees that I have. I don't see jobs going away because of bots. I see jobs maybe being added because of some of the things that we're able to do that we weren't able to do before. So do you think that uh, this era of AI, IoT, automation would require professional to reskill themselves? In some cases, I think it does. Um, from, you know, for some roles, maybe in our HR technology team, I think there's some of that. In some of things, I think it's just having people maybe rethink how they do their job. How can you take advantage of some of these things? Where do you see opportunities to maybe leverage some of these tools that you didn't think about before? And then what does it mean that you spend more time on versus what you've done? So I think there's a, a lot of change management that needs to go on and helping people see opportunities. Um, and so I think that's really where people have to maybe rethink things differently. Perfect. Uh, Christine, uh, you know, there are two more things that I want to talk to you about, especially from the working front angle. One, uh, they say that the pandemic has changed the way hiring is done. Mm -hmm. And second, the work from home culture is here to stay. Mm -hmm. right? What are your views on that? And how is Vistion looking at these two things? Thank you. A couple things. Um, so I think the um, hiring in the time of COVID was really miraculous. And I give talent acquisition teams all around the world, including ours, a lot of credit for finding ways to engage with people um, because you had to do it in different ways and you had to do it over videos. Um, we actually took this time as an organization to step back more broadly and say, what are the definitions of the roles that we need? And so we spent a lot of time really trying to upgrade the type of 
uh, and understand the types of capabilities that we need to support our growth in terms of technology, in terms of being a much larger company, in terms of you know continuing our global expansion. And then to do that and translating that into what the talent acquisition teams had to look like, it was a change. They're using a lot more artificial intelligence tools, which are just pretty standard in the marketplace as well. So I think that the ability to engage people by sending out, you know, packets and they get these surprise kits, all of that has changed. Uh, your second question, though, about work from home, um, we are of the impression that you know we need to have more of a hybrid relationship. We don't think it's the right thing to have everybody working from home all the time. One, we have a very collaborative environment, and there's a lot of uh, things that get discussed at, in hallway conversations or at the water cooler. And we feel really strongly that that drives innovation, which is really part of our growth based on the market trends that you talked about. So we're in a hybrid situation in most cases where we identify certain days of the week or certain, it, it all depends, you know, each country is different um, and they figure out what, what works well. And so what may work for the U.S. in some cir circumstances may not be the right thing for Bangalore. Pune may do something different but generally it's more hybrid. Hmm. Hmm. I now know how Vistion uh, posted those great fi figures last fiscal. Okay. <laughs> how many, I mean, uh, what was your uh, growth in terms of hiring people from India last fiscal? Um, in the last, I don't know the exact numbers, but we've made a large investment in India. In fact, we've just signed two MOUs uh, with two universities in Goa. Um, we've expanded to... Coimbatore and Trivandrum. Uh, we have an office in Pune and Chennai. Bangalore we opened and we've expanded all of our um, floors in the office space that we have and have grown. So there's a lot of capability here in India. We have software platforms that have been developed fully out of here. India is actually developing things for us. It's at the front end of some really premier OEM names. Um, we also support the Indian OEMs. There's a recent Mahindra launch that was so successful that had our products that after I think roughly an hour or two, they had to close down ordering. So we bring a lot of inf uh, innovation in terms of displays, in terms of the cockpit, and it's coming into the Indian market as well. So, you know, bigger displays, um, more complex, with both with four-wheelers and, interesting enough, with two-wheelers. So it's great to have some of these other brands. It's also great to support the people that are maybe just right down the street or right down the street from a country perspective uh, in the products that you're building here as well. Perfect. So you told me that you've signed MOUs. Uh, you've made great investments in India as well. Uh, so does this aggressive hiring plan for India stays this way? Yes, um, we are continuing to grow. And if you um, had looked at some of our financial commitments, um, we uh, very clear, clearly see ourselves on a very large growth trajectory, in part because of the product offering that we have that are really aligned to industry trends, you know, some of the things that you mentioned. Um, and with uh, the 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 way that we feel we need to support our customers. We need to make sure that we're leveraging these software uh, platforms so that we're reusing some of this code, which makes everything a lot more consistent um, when we finally give the product to our customer. So I see hiring continuing. I see internal promotions continuing. I see a lot of growth for India, as well as some of our other locations. But I would say really India, we're probably hiring the most right now. Though you have answered, you have already answered my next next question, but let me ask it. Okay. Right? Uh, where do you see India, you know, stand and contribute in your overall strategy and plans? Yeah. And Indians as well. So um, a couple things. One is I think um, other companies may use India for. Um, um, non-customer facing, that's absolutely not what we do here at Visteon. Our India employees, as I said, are actually developing products, um, not just for the Indian OEMs, but for our global OEMs. Um, they're interacting with our customers. Um, they're building software. They are, in, in my team, the largest group of employees that I have who are leading COEs or leadership roles is here in India. So I see a very large forward leadership role that India is taking um, in our own organization. And again, we have really good 
um, sites around the world. Right now, what we're finding is that the capabilities that we can find in India are really making it easier to make some decisions to um, do even more investments here than, than what we've done in the past. It's also helpful that our CEO is from Goa. And so uh, we have uh, an in there as well in terms of uh, some good connections. Perfect. Christine, now that you mentioned that the CEO from Goa and there's a lot of talent in India, mm -hmm. actually we are sitting in a place where all the buildings here are surrounded with so talented people that they could uh, land a job easily in any part of the mm -hmm. world, right? My question is, how do you, you know, the, uh, I mean, the number of uh, requests that you get for viewing their resumes mm -hmm. and how do you, you know, match those resumes with the exact talent that you're looking for? That must be a hard job. Yeah. Well, you need to start first with um, by defining, you know, looking at the market trends and then you say, what does that mean from a capability that you need? And then you need to look at what are the capabilities that we have locally. And so, you know, we have some, you know, obviously software and some of those types of things, but we really need to first do a good job of defining what does good look like. And once we know that, it's much easier than to sort through the resumes. The second thing that we need to do, though, is we need to develop a really compelling employee value proposition. Why is it that people will want to come here? The good news about um, our company is we're roughly 10,000 employees. We're not so huge that people get lost. So we've said, be seen, be heard, be valued, be yourself, you know, come to Visteon. And I think we can really prove that. You know, the CEO is going to be in our office here. We know the names of some of the software people, actually quite a few of the names of the software people. We know the names of a lot of the other leaders around here because we're here enough. I think, again, due to our size, we can be nimble. And for those people that really feel about uh, strongly about their ability to make an impact, there is a role for you. Um, and there's a role in the global organization. I have a colleague who was working out of Chennai. He's since moved with me to the U.S. to lead workforce planning. So there's many, many opportunities for those that really want to make an impact here and other places within our organization. Hmm. How do you see, or what, according to you, difference between hiring from India and hiring from other locations? Um, part of it is skills. So there are certain skills and capability that, you know, may be stronger in Sofia or may be stronger in um, Mexico or the U.S. or wherever. Um, so it's really trying to understand what the skills are. You know, there's a lot of capability in things like Android and some other um, software aspects that we find in India. You know, I think also... Um, anything related to tech center, tech center. So, you know, some strong IT leadership roles, some strong engineering roles. So there's a lot of um, good capability, specifically in India, that we look for. And it's always nice to have a group of people together. So to my point earlier, where you don't want all the employees in one location and the manager in another one, trying to figure out how do you build that um, group of people you know, whether it's in one of these places, uh, one of our sites, um, so that they can be together. You find that people work most effectively. There's more career development. And really our goal is to try to promote from within. So it allows us to also then look down into our organization, find high po potential talent, and then make sure we're developing them. Mm. Uh, Christine, what you have told me so far is that, you know, you've turned termed AI as assisted, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as uh, uh, Assisted intelligence. As assisted intelligence. <laughs> Thanks for correcting me there. Teams work in tandem from different locations. All of this requires a great culture. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, manage that and how do you develop that culture? How do you nurture it? Mm -hmm. Well, I think first you have to define what it is that's really important to you. You know, for us, it's sustainability. It's having a great customer experience. Um, you know, it's people making impact. So it's defining what that looks like. But if you define it sort of at the corporate level, each location is going to be slightly different, and you need to make sure that within each site that they're also mirroring some of those principles. And so how do we make sure that regardless of what site you're in, you're really focused on the customer? How do we keep sustainability in front of everybody's eyes? Because that's part of our, our cultural initiatives. From a leadership perspective, that's a, such a big influence on culture. So for us, it's people that are inspiring change, you know, build strong teams, you know, 
um, also they know the marketplace and can compare what is out there in the market to what is in here. And all of those aspects come together uh, to really create what that culture is. You want to make sure that you reward people and sites that do it really well. Like certain sites, um, I, I feel like they've done a really nice job of engaging people. And uh, for those that maybe are a little bit farther behind, you offer them opportunities to catch up and maybe learn from each other. In fact, I was joking with my India team yesterday. Um, there's a lot of experimentation that we do here because I've got such a, a, a a large leadership team here. We have so many employees. We can, you know, beta test things here. And I said, what happens in India needs to go global. So we do a lot of testing here on things like um, our new Rise program, which is our um, new uh, early career. Uh, uh, orientation program. We initiate it here. It's also then going to be taken throughout the rest of our world. Mm -hmm. So that's what creates culture. Mm. Christine, here in India, there's a saying in Hindi, which is kos kos par badle pani, char kos par badle pani, which in English translates to every mile in India, water changes. Every second mile in India, language changes. Ah. <laughs> so, and I am of the view that Culture cannot be developed if it's not diverse, if, if diversity mm -hmm. is not there. But, you know, in India, you hire people from all the regions. Mm -hmm. So that's one diversity. Then these people work with people from all the locations of the world, right? Yep. That's one more diversity. Mm -hmm. What's diversity as per you and how do you manage it? Yes. I would want to learn this. Yes. Because <laughs> you are an organization which has people from all parts of the world working together towards one goal. Mm -hmm. And even if we look at India, you have people, people from Bangalore, from Delhi, from Uttar Pradesh, from Bihar, all parts of the country. Yeah. And they're all diverse. Mm -hmm. so how do you manage this? And then how do you, you know, uh, synergize them with people from other locations of the world? Yeah. So the good news, culturally, we've always worked globally. So that's been really great. And we also, one of our cultural tenants is really the focus on the customer. And I think when you have such a strong focus, that really helps drive kind of um, how you know, making sure that your culture is alignment is aligned with each other. So I think, um, thank you for translating the Hindi for me. Um, I think the other thing that we need to take into account is while the cultural diversity is also an important aspect because that means that you have people that think differently and you can get different points of view and, and come up with better solution and that drives a lot of innovation. We also have some specific areas that we're, we're focused on. For example, um, cultural diversity, we're do, we know we do really well because we have so many people in so many different countries. We're also focusing at uh, corporate level is looking at gender diversity. So that's something that's kind of a hot topic no matter what what country you go into and you see things all over the press for that. So about three years ago we introduced um, a, a more focused uh, program on how do we identify female talent and develop them and we implement a pro program called Momentum and Momentum is really uh, taking these high potential women and giving them a very broad year-long study to develop their capabilities focusing on meeting the executive team, uh, partnering them up with someone what, that we call a promoter, not a mentor, but a promoter, because in part they mentor, but in part they help promote them to other people so that people get to know them. And that has been an incredibly rich program that has gone over well, not just for the people that were the participants, but the promoters as well. There's a lot of pride in building that relationship and then the mutual learning that happens. And we've just started another class uh, that's going through that. We can also, for areas like engineering and IT, we can target specific countries and say, when we have leadership roles, how is it that we um, focus on building female talent, where we have to come and bring talent in from the outside? How do we make sure that we have more females in the, the mix? We look at panels in terms of our interviews. How do we make sure that we have both males and females represented, which again in engineering is a little bit harder. And right now about 25% of our population is female, which is actually really pretty good for automotive. And do we want to get better? Absolutely. To do that, we're looking at spending a lot more time 
uh, with freshers and bringing freshers in and again starting in Goa but with some other um, areas is how do we make sure that we start with diversity there and then do a much more intentional job about finding high potential not just females but males as well and developing them internally so it's a very holistic um, system that you need to develop and you know some we've been doing for a while and some we're just building up right now to make sure that both the cultural and and the gender diversity kind of come together to meet our goals women empowerment has been one of the mottos of the government of India mm -hmm. for uh, last several years mm -hmm. since Narendra Modi government took over, right? And you mentioned that uh, around 25% of uh, workforce, your workforce is female, mm -hmm. right? Do you plan to, uh, you know, now that you've already mentioned that you are hiring more from Goa on the fresh level, mm -hmm. but what are, are there any other initiatives that you're taking on the women empowerment front? Especially, I ask this question because in the automobile world, we see, we don't see a lot of women mm -hmm. taking part. Mm -hmm. Apart from the HR functions and the admin functions, yeah. we don't see a lot of women. If you agree, if you would agree uh, with me on that, I think that's yeah. I think that's absolutely the case. Any initiatives that you are uh, you know doing, in, uh, especially to keep women empowerment in focus? Yeah. So each of our sites right now. Um, has a strategy to not just identify the current people that we have, the women that we have placed and kind of track them and figure out how do we develop them, but also then as we have to go outside and bring in people from the outside, how do we broaden that can candidate pool? So each regional organization is focused on that. Then this momentum program is another one that I mentioned. Uh, we have another aspect of that, which is um, uh, women's councils. So, for example, in Mexico, there's a very strong council that's really focusing on gender and, um, you know, creating voices in the workplace and doing charitable things. That's really raising the visibility, but also mostly uh, also educating people, um, the women on, you know, certain aspects of the business, getting them connected to leaders so that we can all learn from each other and really just trying to make sure that it's a supportive, inclusive environment. Again, all of that starts with the top, and that's why I'm so appreciative of our CEO, Sachin Lawande, who is a very um, transparent, supportive uh, of all of our employees in the workforce. And a few years ago, when I was with the executive team and we were actually talking about diversity, I had done a quick count, and as I went around the room, I said, and we look at all of your children you have more females than males, and Sachin, you have two female children. And so they would have been very supportive regardless, but I think that makes it much more personal um, so that we see that um, we have to do a good job of supporting all genders in the workforce. Thanks a ton, Christine. Any final thoughts before we sign off for the day? You know, I just um, probably like to say that um, to achieve all that we need to achieve, you know, to make sure that we're building a sustainable organization to meet, you know, the customer's needs and to serve them in the best way that we can. As I think then about an HR team, I just challenge my colleagues, I challenge other people with an HR lead be the innovation. You can lead that. Don't sit back and wait. You need to be really good business people first that happen then to bring in your HR lens. I think the role of HR is changing dramatically and those that are leading the way really see themselves as business leaders first and that is my challenge to all of my global HR colleagues to change the way that you operate within the organization so that you're really finding impact in what you do. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Christine. This is Mughal Yudhvir Singh signing off on behalf of Mobility Outlook.